Hello guys, so welcome. We're back to learning C++ from the basics, so medium to difficult. So we're still in the basics, and today I have two questions from you. The first question states, let me make it bigger so you can see, then I'll see smaller after that. Convert this formula, f of x equals 3x plus y, divide that by z plus 2, and the input should come from the keyboard and you should output what the result would be. The second question is, input two different strings and print out the string with a higher length. Again, this is, my goal here is not to use fancy functions and templates and, you know, show off my C++ skills. My goal is to teach and start with the basics. I'm assuming you do not, you're still at the lowest level and your goal is to become an expert in C++. I've been doing this for eight years, so, um, the, I, I also assume that you're using either sublime text or visual or something, some type of, of um, text editor that would allow you to compile C++ codes. You can also use Xcode, by the way. Alright, so the, the first thing. Also, by the way, guys, if this is your first time watching my video, I, I have the first lesson, the one before this, that is uploaded already. Please go to my channel. Uh, go on the C++ playlist and you'll find the first video. Thank you. Alright, so let's begin coding. So the first thing you want to do is you want to bring in the IO stream library. That library, this, this library allows you to do basic addition, subtraction, basic things. It, it allows you to do basic input and output. That This is the reason why we call it IO. I stands for input, O stands for output. Alright, so let's, uh, you know what, let me also bring in the using namespace, std. I, I really don't have to. I can just call STD anytime I need it, but it becomes really annoying. I don't want to do that. Although it's not really efficient because it's, it's it takes a lot of space. All right, so let's do the first one. So as always, whenever you're writing a C++ code, the compiler looks for the main function. So we have the main. Now, you probably are asking me, why am I returning zero? Well, since this is not a class on functions, when I do teach function, I'll let you know that when you write functions in C++, you need to start with the return type, which is, in this case, int, int, the name of the function, two parentheses, and then inside the function. Now, because the return type is an int, we need to return an integer. Hence, zero is what the, compil the compiler usually understands. Now, there is other things that you can return, such as exit success, which is honestly translate into a number. But this is what the community does, so we're going to follow this. All right, so the first thing first. Now, I'm going to input from the keyboard. Now, the choice of selecting the correct variable can be a little tricky. Now, either you want the variable to be an integer or you want it to be a decimal, which in this case would be a floating or, or double. But I'm gonna go for floats only because um, when you divide, you want to actually get the decimal value. You know, if you do an int and you do three divided by two, you and I know that the answer of three divided by two is one point five. The compiler will give you one because the variable is set as int int. So let's not do that. So we're gonna um, do it as floating points. Or we can do this. Or we can do this actually. This this would work. Short x, y, and z, and then define the the function itself that we're gonna save it on f, f of x as as float. So again, short it just means I'm just trying to use less memory. Uh, my x, y, and z are not huge numbers; they're very small numbers, so there's no need to use ints. I'm using float instead of double because float requires less memory. Flow actually, I, I believe, is 7 bytes. Again, 1 byte is 8 bits. So, I, I think flow is, is is actually 7 bytes. And it has about... Uh, actually, no, I'm so wrong. I, I apologize for that. Flow is 4 bytes. Uh, double is 8 bytes. Now I remember. And uh, float has a position of exactly 7 digits. So, again, it's less memory that's used. I don't need huge numbers here, so that's why I'm using that. Right, so let's go into it. Now I'm going to say, I'll leave a comment for for the input. Enter x, y, z. Just a, a small note. 
close that directly from the keyboard. So when we're doing from the keyboard, we use send, C-I-N. When we're printing out, we use C-I-N, C-O-U-T. Again, um, watch my first video where I explain these terminologies. I think the best way to learn C++ is to actually do problems. So this, this is why I take a problem solving approach. All right, so line 18, basically I'm saying, I'm telling the person who's gonna type enter from the keyboard, hey, enter X, Y, Z. Line 19, I'm entering X, Y, Z. That's exactly what I'm doing. And now I'm gonna create my function, this function right here, I'm, I'm gonna define it. I'm gonna say F of X equals parentheses like it does, three times X, the computer doesn't know three X. This, it's gonna come as an error, you see that? That doesn't the computer doesn't know that the compiler needs to requires you to use the multiplication operator which is times so it knows that you're doing three times x plus y yes the com computer also knows what PEMDAS is so you're fine then you have z plus two close it we're done all we have to do is now output the result you know to be to be a little uh, fun we can do x equals that would be nice x and then we'll say y new line y equals y and then z z equals z and then new line I always put a new line at the end actually no let's finish it and then we'll say new line f of x equals let me take the whole the whole thing and then we end it that's it so let's let me explain very simple again all of this is just me printing stuff out to the screen saying this is what x is right here I'm this is what y is this is what z is and then i'm outputting the f of x just to make just to make everything look pretty again this is a fairly simple code for you to do it's really not that difficult i'm mean, i am assuming that you are a complete beginner in c++ this uh this video is will get a little challenging as we go but now we're just focusing on just learning the basics okay so let me let me print this out Let's test this out on my thing, terminal. Let's make it bigger. I'm not sure if you can see. View, bigger. Okay, so let me compile that. Compile by doing C++, the name of my file, enter. No errors, yay. Okay, execute it. Let me execute. Boom, you see that? It says enter X, Y, Z. I'm gonna enter. Three, four, and five. Beautiful. Is it one though? Let's let's see. X is three. Three times three is nine. Nine plus four is thirteen. Thirteen divided by seven is not one. So we're doing something wrong. Let's see. Obviously, I'm doing something wrong here. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm just trying to think if I can bypass that. This should give me a decimal. I know what I'm doing wrong. This is what I'm doing wrong, ladies and gentlemen, right here. I'm gonna make all of it float. Okay, it's gonna work now, I know. So let's try this. Let's try the same numbers, three, four, five. You see that? Yay, we got our actual answer. We have and you know what? To even make it more, f more fun, we can do this. You know what? No, let's not do that. This is exactly the output. And you can keep running. You can try different numbers. Try 3, 4, 6. 1, 6, 2, 5. Let's try 1, 2, 3. 1, which, is, which makes sense. 1, 2, 3 makes sense. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. All right, so that was pretty simple, so we're done with that. Oh, um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to 
erase it now and go directly to the next question. Again, I'm not using functions or anything, so I obviously know you can do this better. But again, this is to start from the basics and then move, move to something that is a little more difficult and challenging. All right, so input from the keyboard, two different strings. Print out the string with a higher length. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of this, by the way. So we can do this again. This time, I'm going to bring a different library in. I'm going to bring in the string library. Okay, so that this is what I'm doing. I'm bringing in the string library. All right, so I'm going to, from the keyboard, string, string one, and string two. And now I'm going to little code enter, enter string one. And then we're just going to copy and paste this. Enter string two. That's it. Now let's check to see if I owe string one or string two is, is bigger. Again, this is a simple flow control. If else statement, if it's it's you're asking the computer a simple question. Flow flow control. If string one, the length of string one to do length. I'm using the the length function, the method from the string library. If you go and see the first string, you notice that they give you access to length. Again, I'm not making these things up. It's right here. I googled it before. I made this video, so it's really simple. Look at this string. Go to the string library. You probably can't see, but this is the this is the length. Right here. This is how you find the length. String dot length. There's way more functions you can use. They are all over here. So this is not something that I just made up. This is from the string library. So let's use it. If string one's length is greater than string two's length, print to the screen string one's length equal. So we're going to print to the screen string one's length. ENDL is like it's ending the statement. You can use ENDL or you can use this. Either one. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Else. Again. String two. Let's not write all of that. Waste of fingers. Finger typing. Beautiful. String two's length. All right. This should work. Obviously, it returns the string that has the biggest length. Let us compile this. Okay. Let me clear all of this. Beautiful. Again, we're gonna do it again. No errors. Yay. Enter string one. Let me write. Um. Mm, Kevin, enter string two, love, Kevin, the string, so it prints string one's length, because it has a size of five, more characters, one, two, three, four, five, what about if they have the same size, let's see, Kevin, Kevin, five, it doesn't matter, they're the same size, so it, so it fails the first test case and it prints out string two, because either way they're the same, so you know, to fix that, just put it, greater or equal sign which is doesn't really matter so that's it this is again this is a really really basic code if you enjoyed this please like the video any feedback is welcome subscribe if you have not subscribed and i will post more c plus plus content on my channel i also have different things so i have javascript algorithms that will help you for interviews really difficult questions you know I start with easy ones again, like finding the palindrome, and um, and then I go to like things like finding the maximum length of, of a character that appears in the string. So please check out my videos. I also have things for GMAT, GRE, uh, and other like subjects like chemistry, physics, and math. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.